So I'm going to try to show you how to set up Lucia Auth and Next.js in hopefully less than five minutes. I won't lie, this is going to be all over the place. So pay attention and probably just go look at a code example to actually get this working. First thing is, let's go to getting started and in your project, let's install Lucia. Awesome. The next steps is you need to make a module that you can use in your code base to verify if you're authenticated using sessions. So let's make an auth.ts file inside this lib directory and paste that in. Because in this project, I'm using Drizzle ORM with Terso libsql, right? So I need to bring in a different adapter. Let's go to databases. Let's go to Drizzle ORM. Let's find SQLite down at the bottom. And notice that you can grab some of this code to get everything set up. But before we do that, let's run npm install and install that Drizzle adapter. All right, that's done installing. Go to the bottom, make sure you grab the correct example. And we want to basically bring in that Drizzle SQLite adapter. We can kind of import that there and use it. So scrolling to the bottom, you'll see that there's an adapter that you use. Go ahead and try to pull it in. Make sure you auto import the DB. That's coming from our schema file. And then we also need a sessions and a users table. We haven't defined that, but there's examples of how to do it right here. So let's grab that code, put our schema, let's paste it in. Definitely make sure you export those things so you can bring them in. And now, if you were to go back to this page, you can import your sessions table and your users table. And now this adapter is set up with your current schema. Now, I won't lie, this is kind of a mess to set up and the docs are kind of all over the place. So what I recommend doing is just go to tutorials, go to username and password, and let's just follow the app router guide that they have. And hopefully we can get this going. So basically, some of the things that are changing here is just let's grab all this stuff. And we're going to go ahead and just put it right here. This is just going to allow us to get a username when we try to get the session. Uh, you'll see in a second. So the next step is we need to create an app signup.page.tsx. Let's just go ahead and go and create that. Let's make a new file. We'll do this. Here we go. Grab this page. Go ahead and auto import some missing stuff. And then the action we're going to have to also paste in. So let's make an actions file. And let's grab all this. We'll say actions.ts. So inside of this action file, let's make sure we auto import some stuff. This needs to come from just DB. And down here, this needs to be db.insert. We'll say users table values. Okay. And at this point, the users table doesn't have a username or password hash. So we're going to have to go back to this and we're going to have to add some stuff in. So let's say username. And we'll say password hash. All right. And now we should be able to insert that user once they register. So now we have a sign up action, but let's just go ahead and export that so we can use it inside of this page. Let's just go ahead and import this. And we're going to delete this one because we don't really care about it. Uh, but we will import the sign up action here. Honestly, instead of going through these docs, which I find just kind of confusing, just go and look at the example project and copy some of this code and, and kind of understand it. But let's just try to keep going through these docs, which are kind of a mess. So now that we updated our schema, let's do a DB push which will add that session and that user table, and we can track the username and the password hash here. Go down here, I think we are using this node rs argon2, so let's just go ahead inside of our next config. We set this up. Let's open up our next config. And paste that in, should be good. Now let's just test this out, npm run dev, and then I'm gonna go and open my app. So here's our form, it looks pretty bad, but let's just roll with it. For username, I'm gonna say Bob, and then for password, I'll just go ahead and say like something random, and click continue. And hopefully that created our user. Let's go to their Terso database and refresh and see that we have a user who was actually created in our system. Awesome. The next steps is we do want to create a page for signing in. So let's just go ahead and grab this and I'll make it on the app login page. So make this page, go ahead and grab this login code. And then same idea, we're going to make an action here. which needs to run all of this code. A little bit of cleanup because I'm doing stuff a little bit different from how the docs are doing it, um, but that's fine. So scrolling down, you'll see that this gets a username and a password from the form data, and it verifies that it actually is a valid username and a password. And this example is not using Drizzle, so we do need to kind of like import this, and I'll say query dot user table dot find first where and then we'll say eq user table dot username is equal to username of lowercase let's just try this make sure you import user table and then also import eq from drizzle so this returns the user and if the user doesn't exist we throw an error 
Otherwise, we validate the password using the password hash against the password that was sent in. If that doesn't match, we throw another error, and then we can finally set a cookie for the user once they've logged in. Let's try this and say Bob, and I'll say what is, and I won't actually finish the password and notice that it doesn't work. But if I finish the password, click continue, I'm logged in. If I go to my application over here and click on my cookies, you'll see that we have a auth session set up. So the next step is how do you actually know if you're logged in or not when your user is hitting your app? So what you can do is you can grab this validate request example. Let's just grab this. And we are going to go ahead and just put this. So make another file here called validate request.ts and paste it in. And we don't actually want to import Lucia here. We want to find the Lucia and import that from the auth directory that we already have set up. And what this is going to do is check your session cookies and then return your session information if you have a cookie set and everything is valid. So now in your app, what you can do is I can say const user is equal to await validate request. Okay, and now we'll get back either a user session or we'll get back nothing. So basically what you can do, if the user is defined, then we can simply just show a link and take them to uh, a logout page. And if it's not defined, you could take them to a login page. So let's just say login. And of course, we can take them to sign up or register page if there's no user as well. So again, this is just the bare minimum to get going and you can style it later on. So right now we have a logout button. If you click it, it doesn't actually log the user out. How do you log the user out? Well, you have to basically call a server action to clear the cookies in the sessions. So scrolling down, they have an example of how you can do sign out. Let's just go ahead and grab this. And inside the app, I'm going to say actions.ts. Go ahead and paste this in. And we're going to go ahead and just make our own special little action here, which we can call from wherever we want. Like this. And so if you call this logout action, that should sign the user out by clearing out their cookies. So going back to this logout link, I think it'd make more sense if this is actually wrapped in a form like they have in this example. So let's grab this form here. And let's just go ahead and call that logout action if someone were to click this form. And let's verify this is all working. So let's go back to our app, go ahead and click sign out. And notice that it does redirect us back to the sign in page. But now if I go back to the main page, it says sign in or sign up. So I can kind of go back to the sign in or the sign up. Let's try again. We'll say Bob and we'll say what is up. I'll click sign in. And now we actually have a session set and we can change the content based on that. So honestly, that was probably a lot more than five minutes, but there's a lot of stuff going on you have to manually do when you opt into using Lucia Auth. But again, it gives you a little bit more fine grained control of how you can set up your authentication. The main takeaway is that once you have this all set up, you wanna use this validate request on all of your server actions and all of your React server components to know if the user is authenticated or if they're not. Honestly, making this video makes me wanna just make my own library because this is actually quite a lot of work and hacking stuff together. I think having some type of authentication library built specifically for Drizzle and Next.js would make this much easier because now you have to go and pick and choose all this various stuff. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good day and happy coding.